Hello again, I'm Brett Newton. I'm a composer, orchestrator, and author, and I'm here with another video in my series on great works for wind band. Now that title raises a question. What makes a work great? Well, one thing we can look at is, has the work stood the test of time? Is it a piece we come back to over and over again? Well, that's not a criteria we can use for a piece that's brand new, something that's only been written in the last couple of years. And that is the case with the piece we're going to be looking at today. It's Kevin Day's Concerto for Wind Ensemble. Now, Kevin Day is an up-and-coming young composer uh, from Arlington, Texas, uh, where I lived for about 15 years or so, so I, I know the area well. Uh, unfortunately, Kevin and I have never crossed paths, but I hope to in the future. Uh, heck, there's even a good chance you may even see this video. If you're watching, hi! There's an interesting sociological and psychological question that comes about when we look at what music influences an individual. And we found that time and time again, the music that somebody listens to when they're 12, 13, 14, uh, those real formative years, that's the music that is going to influence uh, your musical choices for the rest of your life. Uh, for instance, at that age, I was, I was weird. I was listening to a lot of Mahler, and that, of course, has influenced my own writing. I want to see a study where we look at composers and we look at what they were listening to when they were 12, 13, 14, and does that have any relation to what they're writing today? And I have a feeling there's a very strong correlation between the two. With Kevin Day, we can absolutely see this correlation. Kevin grew up in a household filled with gospel and R&B and jazz. And the Concerto for Wind Ensemble is full of all of these elements. It's got homages to big band. It's got 70s uh, jazz in there, and you can hear stuff from the 50s. You can hear wind ensemble stuff uh, from traditional wind ensemble pieces. And it's just this wonderful amalgamation of all of these different varying cultures and streams of music coming together in this tour de force piece. Now, unfortunately, I missed out on a performance by the Dallas Winds last week uh, when I was in the middle of rehearsal, which... I much rather would have rather been at the performance than in the rehearsal because absolute worst rehearsal of my life. Maybe I'll tell that story at a different time. But anyway, Kevin Day's Concerto for Wind Ensemble. It's in five movements. Now the movements have titles like vibe, soul, riffs, jam, and each one has a differing feel to it. They kind of bounce back and forth between hot and cool. And, you know, ending in jam, of course, where it's just a breakdown and everybody's wailing away, including a nice, really long uh, technical bassoon solo. And that's one of the things about a concerto for a wind ensemble, just like a concerto for an orchestra, which uh, Bela Bartok invented and other composers have borrowed or interpreted over the years. Every instrument in the ensemble is important. Everybody gets a solo, and I love this way of thinking. It creates a mass of color. Every, you hear all these different tone colors coming through. Um, there's a wonderful solo for the baritone sax, which never gets featured in wind ensemble pieces. You never hear Barry sax. The E-flat clarinet is way up there, wailing away, and just these glorious technical solos. You hear lots of tuba and trombone. There's some wonderful marimba stuff. And I love Kevin's use of color throughout the piece. It's a just wonderful, wonderful orchestration. Um, but the thing is, the piece is energetic and it's fun. And that's one of the things you take away when you listen to it. It's just a lot of fun. And I, I look forward to the ch when I get the chance to play this piece. Who knows when, but hopefully I will get to in the future. Uh, because it just looks like a, so much fun to play on stage. Uh, and I, 
I can't, I can't say enough about the piece. I've, I've listened to it several times over the last week, and I encourage all of you to go and listen to it as well, and really support a uh, up, uh, young up-and-coming composer who's really starting to make a name for himself in the wind band world. And hopefully we hear a lot more out of Kevin here in the future. Uh, if you've played the piece, let me know. Or maybe it's on an upcoming program, maybe for next year, if for college ensembles. Probably not going to happen for a high school ensemble, though maybe. Because I know there's some prominent contrabassoon parts, and well, you don't see a lot of contrabassoons in high school. Except in Texas. But, anyway, let me know what you think. Have you played it? Are you going to play it? Have you heard it? As always, thanks for watching.